Good afternoon, people watching the 65 Lisa Voice. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of my favorite book, probably in the Old Testament, Zechariah. Not because of my son, but you know, it's just one of my favorite, favorite, besides Daniel, Ezekiel. I always go back to this book. Now, this is out of Zechariah 9, 14, and it says, And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. You have to read this book and ask the Lord to show you what he's saying in this book. It's, it's really good. Let me give you the Gospels. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to Scripture. That's how we're saved, why we're saved, and how we're kept saved. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, his blood. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works. Least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his blood, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are Rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time, and you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you. The Holy Spirit will change you if you let him. So, starting with the information on Telegram. What I have so far, and the alarms have been going off, so... And it is saying that Hezbollah has officially declared war. Who would have thunk, right? In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Permission to fight is given to those who are being fought because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is capable of granting them victory. Hmm. Well... From what I understand, Allah is still dead. God isn't. Our God lives. Theirs don't. So, <laughs> there is no victory there. That's this is their this is what they're saying. That their victory is in their Allah. So. Israel continues to remove the upper echelon of the Hezbollah military leadership. Lebanon's health ministry says six were taken out, 15 wounded in a major Israeli strike in Beirut. Hezbollah has fired over 100 rockets at northern Israel in response. So they can try to, you know, kill their Iron Dome is what they're trying to do. So they can get an advantage. But if you look at this... If you look at this, it seems like Hezbollah is running out of options here, or running out of ammo, or running out of supplies. Because they keep talking, but yet they're not really doing anything. So it sounds like they need to be resupplied. That's what it sounds like. In the meantime, it's a perfect advantage for Israel to, you know, do what they're keep doing what they're doing. It says the IDF confirms that the um, head of the Hezbollah rocket force, Ibrahim Kwebezi, was eliminated in Beirut, and other senior commanders in the unit were also present at the site. Kwebezi joined Hezbollah in the late 1980s and played a crucial role in the group's military operations, including planning and executing numerous attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians. So the IDF statement highlighted his significance as a source of knowledge within Hezbollah's missile force and his close ties to other senior 
military leaders within the group. So the IDF also accused Kwebezi of being responsible for launching missile attacks towards Israel civilians over the years, making his death a significant blow to Hezbollah's military capabilities. So there you go. Now, this also came out this morning, and it says that um, this is off the Times of Israel. It says, airlines put the brakes on Tel Aviv and Beirut trips as Israel Hezbollah tensions soar, which is no surprise. It says, European airlines canceled flights to Tel Aviv and Mideast Airlines, temporarily suspending trips to Beirut today as tensions soared between Israel and Hezbollah amidst some of the heaviest exchanges of fire in the region has seen in years. So British Airways, hungary based low-cost carrier, I think the name is Wiaz, or yeah, Wiz, Poland's flagship Lot and Azerbaijan's Azal all canceled services to and from Ben Gurion Airport for today, with the latter two also canceling some flights tomorrow. So Azal, also known as Azerbaijan Airlines, said it's canceling flights between, I think, Baku and Tel Aviv due to recent events and security concerns in Israel. It did not announce an expected time frame at all. So it could be indefinitely, I don't know. British Airways uh, said in a statement that it was canceling uh, flights until September 26th. Adding safety is always our top priority and we're contacting cons uh, customers to advise them of their travel options. So, Lot said in a statement on the website that due to current situation, we are constantly analyzing the safety of Lot Polish Airlines. That's a funny name for an airline, Lot. The other airlines did not immediately respond for requests for comment. They're still waiting, I guess. So the uh, airlines were the latest to suspend flights to the region as tensions have ratcheted up, joining Air India, uh, KLM, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, EasyJet, Ryanair, Spanish Budget Airlines, uh, Vialung, and others that have previously announced services or service freezes to Israel. Now, Germany's Lufthansa, which said last week it would resume flights to Tel Aviv and Tehran on Tuesday, instead announced it will be extending the suspensions until at least October 14th, with flights to Beirut remaining canceled until October 26th. So yeah, they're suspending all the airlines. Now, along with that, China, let's talk about China. Why, what do they know? So China instructs its citizens to leave Israel. So the U.S. sends troops and Israel imposes a special situation on the home front. The situation in the Middle East has started to spiral completely out of control, which it has, and it appears that just about everyone is bracing for a major escalation. The Chinese are telling their citizens to leave Israel. The Biden administration is sending more troops to the region like I reported last night. And the Israeli government has suddenly decided that now is the time to declare a special situation on the home front, which grants the IDF extensive authority to issue orders to the general public. Obviously, all three have become convinced that something really, really big is happening in the coming hours or days. What do they know? In the recent days, many countries have instructed their citizens to leave Lebanon now. But I was quite stunned to learn that the Chinese... Now, Hal Turner had this on his thing yesterday. 
And I wanted to know more about it. That's why I never reported it. I was quite stunned to learn that the Chinese have also told their citizens to evacuate from Israel. Now, let me ask the question that everybody has on their mind, but no one's, no one's asking. Why are the Chinese in Israel? China's embassy in Israel has asked the citizens to leave the country and return to China in a Sunday night statement. The embassy added that Chinese citizens should not travel to Israel for the time being. I think this is actually a prudent move. When all out war erupts, there won't be anywhere in the region, in the entire region that is safe, which is true. It won't. And I think Michael Schneider wrote this, I think. All, as I have discussed previously, U.S. citizens have already begun being instructed to leave Lebanon, and now more U.S. troops are being deployed to the region. The U.S. is sending troops to the Middle East in response to the surge in violence between Israel and Hezbollah. And as the region teeters on the edge of an all-out war, Biden is actually exhausted trying to get him to, I mean, I mean it's, really? <laughs> trying to talk to Netanyahu. Why? <laughs> Why? So the Pentagon announced Monday, yesterday, additional service members would be deployed to join the 40,000 already stationed in the region along with a dozen warships and fighter jet squadrons. Most Americans don't realize this yet. But when an all-out war erupts in the Middle East, the U.S. will be involved. In Israel, a special situation on the home front has been officially declared for the entire country. On Monday evening, the government approved the declaration of a special situation on the home front throughout Israel. Following the most intense day of fighting between Israel and Hezbollah since October. So the declaration of the special situation significantly expands the IDF's power to issue instructions to the Israeli public, allowing it to ban gatherings, limit studies, and issue additional instructions required to save lives. This is huge. Because like I said, Hezbollah isn't making any major moves yet. And I just have a feeling in my gut that their move is going to be nuclear. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm sensing. Because it's awfully strange. They haven't, all they're doing is firing rockets. Because like I said, they're trying to exhaust the Iron Dome by firing rockets. And trying to exhaust the Iron Dome's batteries. trying to buy time. So this is quite a dramatic move, and so Israel officials must believe that all-out war is definitely imminent. And it's going to, like I said, it's going to happen at any time now. To the average person, it looks like all-out war has already started. But... It says here, missile slammed into southern Lebanon, uh, shattering the early morning silence. It says, every nation that is attacked has the right to defend itself, said Admiral Rob ba uh, Bauer, speaking at the close of the NATO's com uh, committee's annual meeting. They are against Israel. NATO is also. So we shall see what happens here. Iran and its proxies have 250,000 missiles and rockets and drones encircling Israel right now, which means 
about 4,000 munitions hitting the Israeli home front on a daily basis. So like I said, I could be wrong, but I have a feeling that this thing could escalate to a nuclear. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to link this in the description box. And I will continue to monitor the situation. And I will be back later to um, do another video. I'm sure I'm going to get more news. So I will be back on later. Thank you.